why you should not learn Flutter in 2025. Now, it's no secret that developer jobs are not as abundant as they were in 2022. And I've seen a lot of people online complaining about not being able to land a job developing Flutter, regretting choosing Flutter as their main programming language and wishing that they had done something else. Now, we can go on talking about which programming languages and frameworks are the best forever. Learn something base level. The internet is built on PHP. Python will never get old. You've heard it all. Relax, sit down in the boat. What is really happening is that cheap money is not as abundant as it was in 2022 due to interest rates being raised, due to inflation spiraling out of control following the pandemic in 2020 to 2022, which sparked a lot of new startups and a lot of new jobs inside of the tech space where companies had the money to be able to afford to hire new developers and to invest other money in developing their product. Now, a lot of companies also mistook this temporary upward trend that happened due to COVID to be permanent, and then therefore started making business decisions in accordance to this. So they started to expect the same level of growth that they saw in 2022 to continue all the way into 2030. But this was a big mistake that a lot of large companies made because the increase that we saw in the use of tech products during the pandemic was not in fact permanent, but it was temporary due to an outside effect. So for example, Netflix, hired a lot of people because they saw a spike in the number of people watching Netflix but as we do know people don't watch Netflix as much now when they're free to go outside and do whatever they want. This led to a massive hiring spree and a lot of software jobs being available and people getting paid essentially whatever they wanted and now that we've seen a slowdown from this compared to 2022 we're seeing a lot of people who chose to go down the software development route and a lot of people exiting university with a computer science degree, and they're now struggling to find employment. Now, this is happening for all tech jobs and particularly some programming languages, but don't blame Flutter. Back to the main topic here. Are you shooting yourself in the foot by learning Flutter as your sole framework? Yeah, maybe. Some programming languages such as C++, something more computer level will always be in demand essentially. Uh, frameworks and languages which are the backbone of the technical infrastructure that our society is built upon will definitely be in demand in 50, 100 years from now. Other programming languages that are a little less like this but still make up a large part of what modern day tech applications are made of, such as JavaScript, such as Python and modern AI applications are probably going to be a little bit more in demand over time than some other programming languages are. However, some frameworks I would argue should be viewed more as tools than as programming languages or frameworks and Flutter falls perfectly into this category. Flutter is definitely more of a tool than it is a programming language or a framework in and of itself. It's a tool to build cross-platform high-performing mobile apps but it's not necessarily the only thing you need in order to be able to provide value to an employer or to provide value to a customer. If you're learning Flutter just to get a job and sit down and crunch code for someone else, you for example work at an agency, they tell you hey build this code, we, we need you to do this particular feature for this particular mobile app, then yeah I would argue that Flutter is not the best thing to do in 2025. There are many more, more in demand programming languages that are perfect for this. For example go do Ruby on Rails or like that or something that a lot of the large banks use and if you just want to shuffle through code, sit down at a desk, get paid well, have abundant job opportunities, then go learn another programming language like that. However, if you want to solve business problems for companies and create solutions for customers, whether they be individuals or companies, then I think Flutter is a great choice. However, not on its own. For example, I deal a lot with Flutter. I build a lot of mobile apps using Flutter. I do this for myself, but I've also done this for other people. And the appeal to me is that I'm able to take one of the ideas that I have, such as Venture Pulse or the simple inventory app that I've recently built, and I'm able to create something in a relatively simple and fast period of time that I can put out for people to download and use on their own devices. Also combine this with a business side, a graphic design side, and a solution-oriented approach to the problem that I'm trying to solve, where Flutter is just, just a tool that I use to solve that problem. For example, when I develop apps for other companies, what I bring to the table is the ability to, in a quick and efficient manner, bring a Flutter app out to the market that is high-performing, that is relatively simple for them to maintain and upkeep in the future, and that gets the job done from the perspective of what they want to deliver to their customers. The appeal there is also the business oriented nature of how I do it. So for example, if I build an app for someone, I ensure that there is business logic in there so that they can get paid. There is business logic in there so that they can price specifically for different markets, etc. And I have done that for multiple apps and I therefore have that experience and I can therefore bring that as an added value, not in just knowing Flutter, but I use Flutter as a tool in the whole set of services that I offer that is bring a high performance app to the market with, with the relevant business logic to make it a success product. And I think that if you want to really get paid well, have an easy time finding a job, 
and have an easy time finding clients if you're going the self-development route, then I think you need to have this approach as well. Learning Flutter in and of itself, I don't think is a great choice. As a company want to hire someone to just shuffle through code, there are many more cheaper and simpler ways to do this. For example, if you're watching this from a Western country, if you're someone who just shuffles through code, you look at a UI design and you just build code, based on that, then it's quite easy to replace you with AI, for instance, in the future, but definitely people from a lower paid market, such as India or Eastern Europe, who are going to be able to write code as efficiently as you, but at a much lower hourly rate, meaning that the company who just needs you to shuffle through code is going to be able to save money that route. I would argue that you need to add something else to your portfolio. Maybe it's not just Flutter, maybe it's a combination of doing UI design as well so that you can provide an all-in-one solution to someone. You can both design an app and you can build it, or it can be the business logic, or it can be what I offer, which is from start to end, bring an app to the market with all the legalities considered, with all of the business logic considered, as well as a wall to bounce business ideas off in regards to this particular application. But you can be creative with this. You can pick any approach that you want. Maybe you want to learn Flutter and you want to learn Python and you want to specialize in how to integrate AI features into Flutter apps, for example, combining those types of things with Dart code. Or maybe you want to specialize in financial tech applications and learning all about the APIs and the security needed to run bank apps, for example, using Flutter. Just learning Flutter code in and of itself will not be enough for you to be competitive in a market and especially a market that is seeing more talent fetching fewer jobs. So it's simple supply and demand. We have a lot of supply of software engineers and a dwindling demand for them, meaning that the price of a software engineer and what you can expe expect in terms of salary is going down and also the number of jobs that are available in the market is going down. And the only way to remedy this is to specialize in some way. So here's the takeaway. Mobile app development definitely isn't dead and Flutter isn't the wrong thing to learn in 2025. However, I would argue that if you're planning to learn just one thing and you're planning for that one thing to be Flutter in 2025, then you're going down the wrong route. I would argue that you need to combine this with another skill so that your skill set is not just being able to program in Dart and Flutter, but being able to provide larger encompassing value in regards to app and software development. Focus on real problems and think about how you can pick a niche in a particular skill that you're gonna be able to learn better than most other people so that you can solve people's problems, whether that be an employer or a customer in a more efficient way than anyone else. If it's just being able to code and understanding the syntax, then there's a thousand or a hundred thousand other people who can do just that just as well or maybe even better than you. Also, if you're going down the route of learning software in 2025, and if you chose some Flutter in particular, definitely make sure that you double down on learning to cooperate with the AI tools. ChatGPT, Cursor, GitHub Coldpilot, and any other future AI or digital tool that's gonna be available way after this video is put out. This is also one of those things in regards to competition. In a world where there's increasing competition, which we're seeing now in the developer market, if you're able to use tools in a more efficient manner to make you a more efficient programming employee than anyone else, or than other people, it's gonna be easier for you to land a job and it's gonna be easier for you to demand a high salary for that job. Same way goes if you're just renting out your time. So it's not necessarily about learning how to code and learning the syntax because AI can do that already and other people can do that already. But it's about being able to take this knowledge and combine it with other knowledge, essentially skill stacking. I have a great video about that, by the way, check that out. In order to combine them and create as much value as possible. And this is where the value for you lie. How much can you combine and how much value can you provide in regards to development by combining other skills and other knowledge? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.